Good morning and welcome to Visit Scotland's second webinar of our COVID recovery program. Um, there are over 200 of you registered with this webinar, so we are holding you on mute. But I want to just explain we're very, very keen to get as many questions as possible today, so that, and we will try and answer as many as possible. In order to get questions from you, I would really like throughout the presentations that you type some questions to us. And I'll go through the functionality of doing that just now. So if on the control panel um, that you see on your screen, there is an orange button. If the arrow is pointing to the left, click on it. That will open up a control screen. If you look down, you'll see a tab that says questions. Click on the questions. And if you then type any questions as you go along. What we found so far is that people have um, left the questions until very to the very end, which results in me struggling to read everyone. And sometimes I will miss. So best to ask them as you think of them as we go along. Uh, and if we don't manage to ask or answer all of the questions, which is very possible, our plan is um, to uh, post not only this, the, the questions and their answers on visitscotland.org, but we will also post the slides on, on the same um, website, which means that you don't need to be trying to take a picture or anything of the slides as we go along. So next, our, uh, in terms of our what we're covering today, if we could move to the next slide. This webinar is, is really about the market, our first markets to return. And Visit Scotland describes those as our day trippers, our visiting friends and relatives and families. And today we've got our Visit, Visit Scotland marketing team represented by Gwen Reyes, Fiona Holmes and Judy Marins, who will be running through individual topics. To run through the agenda, very quickly, what we will be looking at today is um, a, an overview of the recovery as we view it and our, what our insights give us. Looking uh, at a, an immersive look at day trips, particularly the Scots market, and giving a review of families and the visiting friends and relatives, relatives market. At the very end, and this we will we will give plenty of time to uh, answer any questions you have, and we will then wrap up. There are also some great examples which I really want to emphasise of how people have been um, getting their external messages to help our visitors have a really enjoyable visit of their experiences. I'll go through those at a later stage. So for now, I'll hand you over to Gwen Reyes. Thanks, Patrick. Today, I'd like to give you a little background in terms of the work we've been doing since this pandemic arrived and share with you our thinking about the steps we're making towards recovery. But first, the reality of the situation. We don't know when visitors will be allowed to return. We're very much taking our steer from Scottish Government in terms of the science and we'll only start promoting travel to Scotland when the First Minister says it is safe to do so. We don't know in what capacity we'll be able to accept visitors, what businesses will be able to cope with the physical distancing and other COVID safe requirements. And we don't know when communities will be ready to welcome visitors. We know that a one size fits all approach will not work. And we're very conscious that there's a fine balance to be struck between communities that are concerned about the potential negative impact of visitor influxes versus those businesses that depend on tourism for their livelihood. However, we have continued to promote Scotland with Dream Now, Travel Later messaging throughout this pandemic and have detailed recovery plans for each market, ready to implement when the time is right, taking guidance from Scottish Government at a national level and then local communities. Throughout this period, we've been gathering intelligence and data from our networks around the world and sharing our findings through our weekly market intelligence reports published on visitscotland.org since 1st of April. 
and we're putting processes in place so that we can communicate when local communities are ready to welcome visitors. And crucially, we've kept Scotland top of mind with visitors and we'll adjust our messaging as restrictions ease. So, what was our early response? Working with Scottish Government and chairing the Scottish Tourism Emergency Response Group, Visit Scotland quickly recognised there would have to be a phased approach to the pandemic. Starting with respond and reset when all non-essential travel is prohibited, moving to restart, the phase we're entering now, and looking forward to recovery. During the respond and reset phases, our marketing to potential visitors has been very much dream now, travel later, and we developed new web content on visitscotland.com to include virtual tours of Scotland and ways to enjoy Scotland from your armchair. We also created the hugely popular Absence Makes the Heart Grow Fonder video and continue to work with our tour operator and travel agent contacts globally to keep Scotland top of mind. As we approached domestic movement, we quickly realised this needed to be broken down into different steps, which I'd like to take you through now. So this is quite a busy slide, but you can see here that we're currently in the restart phase where we're still actively promoting the stay home messaging. The first step of domestic recovery is very local day trips and we'll be working closely with national partners such as the National Parks and Forestry Land Scotland, businesses and communities to understand which areas are ready to welcome visitors and we'll share that information. Using platforms such as social media, we can deliver very targeted adverts which we can easily turn on and off and have different messaging for different cities. Step two then sees slightly longer day trips, still targeting primarily a Scots market, but some North England activity too. We're working closely with the accommodation sector and Scottish Government to see if some overnight stays might be permissible in this step two, and we'll update activity accordingly, and no discussions are ongoing. In step three, we'll begin to see more widespread overnight stays, but still very mindful of communities being ready to welcome visitors and targeting Scots and North England before the final step within domestic recovery, when we'll be promoting overnight stays and short breaks to the rest of the UK and Ireland. We're working on a similar framework for international markets, and we'll share this as soon as we can. We'll have a subsequent webinar to share insights into the UK and Irish visitor for overnight stays. But for now, I'd like to hand over to Fiona Holmes, our UK marketing manager, to share her knowledge of the importance of the day visitor. Thanks, Gwen. Day trips are a huge part of Scottish tourism every year and will be the first to recover when travel restrictions begin to ease. So I wanted to share with you some of the insights we have for this key market. In 2019, there were 133.6 million day trips, which contributed £5.8 billion in spend to the visitor economy. The Scots market are hugely important for day visits. 86% of day visits and 77% of day visits spend last year were by residents of Scotland. This equates to 115.2 million visits and £4.45 billion pounds in Spain. So what do we know about the Scots day trip market? The stats and insights here are taken from the Great Britain Day Visitor Survey for 2019. So it's looking at the profile of Scots day visitors pre-COVID-19, but interesting to consider what might change or be amplified given the current circumstances. We know that the Scots day trip audience are most likely to take a round trip of between three to four hours and that the median distance travelled by Scots on a day trip is between 21 and 40 miles. We know that car is the most popular mode of transport for day trips and research is highlighting that travel by car is likely to increase when initial restrictions are lifted due to the ease of social distancing and that flexibility for travel decisions to be made or changed spontaneously. In terms of top activities for a day trip, visiting friends or family for leisure is number one. In 2019, 35% of all day trips by Scots involved visiting friends or family for leisure. 
We'll come on to this in a bit more detail in terms of the BFR market visiting friends and relatives, as that's also likely to be amplified given the current circumstances. People have been in lockdown, so reuniting with friends and family is high on the agenda. Other top activities for a day trip include going out for a meal, undertaking outdoor leisure activities such as golf and walking, and general days out to explore an area. In terms of destination type for Scots taking a day trip, cities and large towns were most popular, followed by small towns and then rural countryside, villages and seaside were all comparable last year. What's interesting is to compare this to some recent research that's been done to track consumer sentiment and holiday intentions of Scots during the COVID-19 pandemic. A research agency, 56 Degree Insight, have conducted research with 500 adults in Scotland to ask about their future holiday intentions. This will be a monthly report and these first insights are from the beginning of May. Interestingly, you'll see that the desirability of destination type has more focused now on the countryside and coastal areas than what we saw in the 2019 research. This goes hand in hand with the behavioural changes mentioned around avoiding busy places and being aware of social distancing. It is worth noting, however, that towns and cities are still high on Scots agendas for day visits. Other changes in behaviours reported include avoiding public transport and choosing to travel by car. As mentioned, we know the UK audience largely travel by car anyway. Also being aware of the cleanliness and hygiene standards at places they are visiting is a change in behaviour. This research is available online at 56degreeinsight.com and we're also including updates from it within our weekly intel report on visitscotland.org. To look at day visitors in some more detail, we can break down by different life stages. This information is a three-year average from 2017 to 2019 and for all GB day visitors. Three nesters are those 16 to 34 year olds with no children in the household. Families are of all different ages with children in household. Older independents are 35 to 54 year olds with no children in their household. And empty nesters are 55 plus again with no children in household. What we can see from the table is that empty nesters, so those 55 plus, make the most day trips in Scotland, accounting for a third of all day trips in 2017 to 2019. They are followed by families who generate greater expenditure, around 36% of total expenditure due to higher spend. The main reason to go on a day trip across all the groups is to visit friends and relatives. There are some significant variations in other activities undertaken, with families making the most day trips to visit their attractions and empty nesters making most day trips to have a meal or explore an area. Those pre-nesters, the 16 to 34 year olds, are most likely to travel outside their area of residence for a special event, like a festival or an exhibition. Seasonally, variations in the volume of domestic tourism are much less dramatic than in international tourism. Summer is the most popular, with 28% of day visits occurring between July and September. But April to June and October to December both represent 25% of day trips in the last three years. And January to March is just slightly behind that at 22%. So it's encouraging to know that day trips do already occur year round in Scotland. In terms of life stage, families travel mostly in spring, August and late autumn. Empty nesters have a clear preference for summer visits and the pre-nesters and older independents are more evenly spread throughout the year. This chart breaks down day visits by region and life stage across the last three years. We know that Scots make up the majority of day visits, but it's also important to note that there are also non-Scots day visitors. This is largely Northern England visitors and is particularly key for those south of Scotland regions which are within close driving distance. 
People living in the west and east of Scotland make the most day trips nationally, accounting for 40 million and 38 million trips per year between 2017 and 2019, respectively. And we can see that empty nesters, so those 55 plus, and the family market take the most day trips. I shared some insight into what we know about the day trip market to Scotland. We know it will be the first area of recovery, so I wanted to finish this section with some ideas on what you can do to reach the day trip audience. Firstly, you can adapt messaging for the domestic audience on your website and social channels like Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. For Scots and people who choose to live in Scotland, this is their home, so they may not necessarily see themselves as a visitor. Your messaging can reflect this by inviting people to explore their local area or find out what's on their doorstep. It's an opportunity to reconnect Scots with Scotland. A day trip can also be very spontaneous. We know the majority of day visitors travel by car, so they don't have to make travel plans. They can just decide and go. This offers opportunity to inspire immediate visits. For example, if the weather forecast is good for the weekend, you could reference that in a Facebook post and say it's the perfect time to visit your area or attraction. Businesses should also consider collaborating and supporting other local businesses to highlight the wider regional offering. A day trip will become a more appealing proposition if there's a few things on offer. Scots will understandably think they know Scotland, but you know your area better, and especially in the current circumstances, what's going to be open and any changes to opening hours, that kind of thing. So it's good to cross promote other businesses in your area and also keep your website and other listings like visitscotland.com and your Google card up to date. The UK market, especially Scots, are motivated by value for money. There's a lot of great quality experiences across Scotland, so use that quality offering and any unique selling points of your business to promote visits. The current circumstances will also have created job insecurity for a lot of the UK market, so highlighting value or that perception of value will be key. I'm now going to pass you over to Judy Marins. Senior Market Manager, who will give you some more insight into the family market and visiting friends and relatives. Thank you, Fiona, for taking us through the day visitor profiles. In the following slides, I will be taking you through the families and VFR market, which are a part of the day trip market. The VFR is the abbreviation for visiting friends and relatives, which is an important group of visitors that will want to travel again once they are able to do so. already touched upon this uh, previous in the presentation, almost one third of all day trips in Scotland have been done by UK families. And this again reiterates the importance of this audience. The families will be an important part of recovery and which is why we have created lots of child friendly content on our own webpage visitscotland.com. It's all about having that stay at home content but also inspiring the little kids and their fam families to explore Scotland when possible. Fiona already briefly talked about the family market earlier in this presentation. Almost one third of all day trips in Scotland have. In 2018, Business Scotland has conducted research with UK children aged 8 to 12 years old and their parents to explore what they wanted from a family trip and what makes a family trip away so brilliant. This will give you some more insight into the family's market, as 69% of the research parents indicated that children have some level of influence on their holiday destination choice. The key elements that are important for their holidays and a great experience is all about togetherness. It's all about sharing that experience is being with the family together, and it's just not only kids having or doing an activity. It's all about sharing an exciting adventure, having access to the outdoors and exploring the outdoors, looking into new activities, but also having the chance to share common activities. It's all about exploring and independence for the children itself and having experiences that reflect kids' everyday passions and interests, such as sports, animals and friendships. 
For children, inspiration is most often led by recommendation, family nostalgia, school studies, well-known attractions that they've learned at school or from friends. And that inspiration can also come from TV, films, and websites. These are elements you can take into consideration when you're wanting to target this group of visitors even more. In terms of top activities for a day trip by visitors who are visiting their friends and or family for leisure, number one is going out for a nice meal. Secondly, is going on an outdoor activity. And thirdly, is going on a general day out or to explore the surrounding area. As you I mentioned before, this will likely be amplified given the current circumstances. People have been in lockdown, haven't been able to reunite with friends and family for quite a long time. So this will be key for them to do once they are able to go on a day trip. Looking at the destination type for the visiting friends and relatives market, this is in line with what Fiona shared before. The same applies for when they are traveling which is practically year round with a higher peak in the summer and December months. In the graph on the right side of the slide, you can see also the other top activities that they are undertaking when they are visiting friends or family or leisure. You can find your key takeaways on the VFR and families market on what you can do after this webinar. Firstly, it's all about highlighting family experiences. We would encourage you to promote any new activities, unusual experiences, or only in Scotland things to do that offer the opportunity to create a defining family memory for your visitors. As Fiona mentioned before, it's all about promoting your own business as well as attractions in your surrounding area. You can also use imagery featuring families. That imagery should stress interactivity to maximize appeal to kids, not just visit and look, which may be perceived as slightly too passive. Think about touch, try, taste, or, or how to get involved. Secondly, it's about dialing up that togetherness message. Dial up the key message of the benefits of a day trip or a holiday for families. It's all about spending quality time with the family. Even more important in current circumstances. Share the practical information of your own business by continuing to communicate to your own website, your Facebook page, your Instagram account, and via the emails you're sending out to your database in order for you to engage with the UK audience who will be the first part of returning visitors. Research done by Google is showing that consumers still want brands to engage during lockdown. And the top things they want to hear is what's opening and when, where are the nearby facilities, etc. This is why we would encourage you to keep practical information up to date and easy to find. Last but not least, your online presence is key. There has been a significant move to an online economy with increased use of online channels. This will impact future consumer journeys. So it's important for you to review and optimize your digital footprint now on your own channels, like your website, your listing at visitscotland.com, on the OTAs you're being represented on, etc., and keep them up to date with latest info. With more people online and consuming more media, this is the opportunity to inspire future visits. Now is the time for you to consider what makes your business interesting and identify what is unique in what you are offering. All convening activities we will be doing within Visit Scotland will be done under the Only in Scotland umbrella and would encourage you to tie in your message into our Only in Scotland concept. Experiences that are unique to Scotland, but also experiences made unique because they are enjoyed in Scotland. You should consider sharing stories around your unique propositions, and this could be fun facts, imagery, videos, etc. The new Visit Scotland recovery assets will be available for you to use, as well as resources like the Digital Media Library. And we've included a link in one of the next slides, including information and links. To our webinar on the first returning visitors to domestic market. Thank you all. Thank you, Judy. Thank you, Gwen. Thank you, Fiona. I thought that was very useful. And I have to say the 
questions have been coming in thick and fast. I had mentioned at the very at the very outset that being able to communicate how you're opened and how how people can physically distance safely, how they can utilize your facilities is going to be key in terms of reassuring our day trip market. And here are some great examples. Again, we'll be sharing these slides with you, so don't uh, don't worry about recording them all. But Blenheim Palace has already put in uh, on their website a really good way of communicating to their prospective visitors of how to book, how to get around their site, um, and also how to uh, keep physically distance whilst they're going around. Merlin Enter Entertainment, who are a very, very big company in the UK, have done some great vi Vimeos, which again explain how people physically can get around their particular um, attractions. Re really worth doing. Auckland Museum in Australia, they're a little bit farther ahead. Again, some great examples. As with this um, Swiss Transport Museum, Brandenburg Gates, for example, are handing out uh, poles which sort of physically show how far you should be away from people. I don't know how well it's working, but again, it's sort of innovative ideas which are worth considering. Um, the Swiss Museum, they, they very clearly explain that it's that you've got to buy your ticket online, uh, where you can get hand san sanitizer. Um, and again, the Auckland Museum is, we've, is, is around uh, what, what is opened within their museum, how to access uh, their cafe and retail, and how to pay in those. So they've gone over uh, all of in it, put themselves in the mind of the visitor in terms of what are their concerns, what are their barriers, and really looked to explain that on their website and on their social media channels. So this is really worth looking at and considering uh, in, in terms of your own planning for reopening. So uh, in, in looking at uh, the questions that have come in, I think we can move to the question and answer session now. Um, what uh, I'll, I'll ask some questions to my colleagues, but firstly, there was uh, quite a lot of questions around, and very, very understandably, if we in Visit Scotland can indicate when it's likely we can reopen. And we have to say we, we can, our our um, knowledge is pretty much the same as as your own. The announcement by uh, the Scottish government in terms of its phases and the likelihood that the opportunity to uh, be open for experiences will be in phase three. When that is, you can physically you can work that out in a theoretical way in terms of the announcements that are on on, on a three-week phasing um, but what, what you've got to always bear in mind that, that those are um, very theoretical based on everything happening as as might be planned with no spikes uh, that uh, is possible so it has to be safe and we have to go with the guidance of the Scottish Government we haven't enough information right now to be able to predict when that will happen. Um, so the, the other questions that um, there were some interesting ones, um, Gwen, if you could decide which amongst your team would answer this, but the, the Outer Hebrides, um, Mari says, was featured prominently in recent Visit Scotland campaigns. Given the reduced 18% ferry capacity and the strong anti-tourism approach from the island's MP, Will the islands be removed from future campaigns? And this is a personal plea from Mari is, this is critical to me as returning as a returning resident with a property to renovate, hoping to make a living from tourism. Without tourism, I will not be able to afford to renovate or return. So the question really is how prominent will the Outer Hebrides be um, in future Visit Scotland campaigns? Thanks, Patrick. Gwen here. I'm happy to take that question. Um, working with communities and identifying when communities are going to be ready to welcome visitors is absolutely critical to our activity going forward and one that we're really mindful of. 
and we're working through processes about how we best do that. We've got lots of channels to the communities. We work with our regional directors who work with the local councils. They work with the um, DMOs in the different regions. They work with some of the local tourist associations. We also have our um, eye centre staff who are embedded in the community and can give us real insight into what the feeling is. And we know within communities, there are going to be individuals that depend on tourism for their livelihood and individuals that are really concerned because they may potentially be shielding. So getting that communication right is really important and making sure that we have the right visuals and the right imagery on our activity is critical. So we are very mindful that we need to communicate the right messages at the right time, and that will be done in consultation with communities. So our initial marketing activity is going to be what we call tactical, very tactical. So working with Facebook, we're going to be um, doing different activity and different creative for um, residents of Edinburgh, Glasgow, Inverness, Dundee, the main conurbations, and promoting different um, attractions that we know are open and ready to welcome visitors. We're also looking at how we can get that information on visitscotland.com so we can share with potential visitors where sites are open, where car parks are open, and people can safely visit. So we're, we're looking to do it in as controlled a way as we can. Great and, and quite um, quite linked to that, Gwen, and I could probably answer it is, can you explain exactly how we're engaging Visit Scotland when I say we with communities, destinations and businesses to measure their sentiment? And, and just to reiterate, we have, um, we have teams of people in each region, um, the regional directors who are actively engaging with communities and the destination management organizations. Likewise, um, we also have relationship managers in each each area, uh, and they have carried out over 3,000 phone calls to businesses, uh, checking how they are, what uh, what access they've they've made to funding, what support they would they would like um, to see and get from Visit Scotland. All of that's been fed back in centrally uh, to help with our planning going forward. Um, Another question, again, Gwen, uh, that might be useful. Do you, do you have specific areas, promotional videos that Visit Scotland members can use on their own social media? We are in, in Dundee and would love to post a short video highlighting the strengths of the city. Yes, so on our digital media library, and we, I think there's links on the end of this presentation, but certainly we can add that uh, on. We do have different um, video assets that people are able to access and share. Also, as part of this activity, we're working closely again with the different areas to identify which attractions and which um, activities will be open for business um, first and able to promote those. So some of that will be the activity that's going out on Facebook. And we are doing some, or some new editing we won't be doing new filming in the first instance but editing of existing footage to pull together short 6 10 15 second videos of different areas and we can make those available for people to be able to use through their own channels as well and this is one just coming in so i said do you, do you think visitors will still be keen to visit an attraction if we are forced to reduce the experience, say closing rooms that are too small for social distancing, as long as we, um, this is the spirit, as long as we reduce the replace the price to reflect this. Again, I think people are very keen to get back to visiting. We're, we're seeing evidence of lots of pent up demand. Um, Certainly in the first instance, we think people want to visit friends and family, as we've said, and also revisit favorite places. And that will include attractions and activities and outdoor sites, different places that they love, particularly Scots, who we know are one of our biggest groups of visitors. And I think it's all about communication. 
you know, we're all in this together. It's about being open and people can make informed decisions before they travel, which is why having that online presence, updating your website, different touch points, if you've got social media, advising people what's going on, so people can then make an informed decision. The worst thing is for them to travel expecting to find something and then it's not open. But if you explain that, you know, these rooms are open, these parts of the attraction are open, but unfortunately for these reasons, we've had to close these. I think people will understand and will still be willing to travel. Yes, is my opinion. Okay. And um, there's lots of, and I think we've got some accommodation providers or at least people linked with accommodation providers on the webinar. Lots of questions as to whether self catering can open before other sectors. And I think just an answering to that, I know the Association of Self Caterers as well as the holiday park representatives are making strong cases to the Scottish government. So we, we will advise Scottish government of those concerns and those particular associations, if you're not a member of, are well worth, they're, they're open to non-members at this moment in time to help raise these particular concerns. So I do know those um, those particular issues are being raised in very strong terms by the Association of Self Caterers, by British Holiday Homes and Holiday Park Scotland, as well as the Scottish Tourism Alliance. So um, the, the other small, the other short question, I think this is a fairly easy one is, does phase three include gardens or is that for inside attractions only? My knowledge, Gwen, and you can reiterate is that actually gardens are earlier. Um, and the reason yeah. I'm saying that, um, Jutland Artland, is it yeah, the um the out, just outside uh, lo, the Edinburgh, Jutland Artland, I think. Jupiter Artland, sorry. Jupiter um, Artland. They, yes, they've got a booking system in which has really worked well in terms of managing their uh, their, their, their visitors' physical distancing. So, so we agree uh, gardens uh, will be in phase three. Phase two, okay. yes. So outdoor, outdoor attractions are in phase two. Um, and again, it, but if you've got cafes and gift shops and indoor elements, then those have to be you know, separate and, and, and not open, but certainly the outdoor attraction element can be, can be visited in phase two to do and a similar question linking back to the other one is how can attractions inform visitors about limited offering and close exhibits without putting visitors off and i think there, there's some great examples in the links that i've i've shared on the on the original slide where uh, the they are businesses are very open in terms of what is available allowing people to make their choices as to whether they want to come along and i, I think as gwen has said that pent up need of wanting to get out. Um, I, th I think once you are, you manage expectations in terms of how people can get around, what is open, what is not, whether there is a particular room that will require one person in at any given time, that it's, it's just that little bit longer and how you manage that in terms of your customer service. It's just, I think it's very much about how you communicate to your prospective visitors and using your channels such as your website such as such as your social media to be as clear as possible on that point so i think as i said um th there's been some great questions um, thank you very much for that we've not been able to get through them all but we will go through them now uh, sharing them amongst our colleagues to get you the most accurate answers and we will post those in the COVID advice section on visitscotland.org. Uh, you can expect the presentation uh, with the slides. I know some of you have had some issues with audio, um, so they, they, we, we will certainly be uploading this to YouTube and then embedding it on visitscotland.org. So the audio will be there for you to listen to. So apologies for that not working for some of you. So I look forward to um, seeing you on our next webinar. Here is a slide which sort of shows um, some of you might like to get in contact. I've mentioned our industry relationship managers. The best way to contact them is, is business.advice at visitscotland.com. There are other um, parts of our team that you might, might want to get in contact. And uh, if we could look now at the webinars that are coming up that might be of interest to you. So our next one is 
uh, on the 11th of June. And that's how we've pulled together some of the foremost European web booking solution providers. And we're going to have an open round table with them on the 11th of June for them to go through the new facilities that they've looked at adding to their booking solutions in order for you not to change but necessarily although you might see that as a as a need or you might see it as a need to actually get it on board very quickly but just to talk in terms of what functionality they're providing which helps you to safely open and on the 16th of June another part of the suite uh, on of, of today's marketing uh, information uh, again about first to return and that's about targeting visitors close to home and will be suitable for all sec sectors including experiences including the accommodation and se the service accommodation sector and very importantly on the 25th of june we're going to have a, a digital fundamentals webinar that will be for those of you who just want to check that you're doing your digital activity right it's 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 really for those who have just started on digital or have started on that journey, want to double check that they're on all the channels and we'll have a little COVID filter in pretty much all of the of sections as well to give you some top tips as what you might do in terms of utilizing your channels to ensure that you're getting as much exposure as possible. So I look forward to you all uh, coming on board for the future webinars. Look out for our e-update for the links to register or go on to uh, visitscotland.org, the events and training section, and you'll see all of the webinars there for you to book on. Once again, thank you very much for coming on.